Hey everyone, it's Andrea and this is just a quick catch up. I've just got back from London today. Um, and I thought I'd just catch up and show you a few of the things that I bought while I was down in London. As you know, we went to see Frankie Valley in concert at the O2. I didn't buy a Frankie Valley program because they were like 10 or 12 pounds and they weren't really that impressive to be honest. They were very thin paper from what I could see. Um, so I did enjoy the concert and I will obviously be telling you a bit more about that later. Um, obviously as part of colour and chat on Friday because obviously it's going to be Grace's colouring along which is from the 28th I think to the 7th of May and I'm taking part in that so I'll tell you all about Frankie Valley and everything in detail but I just wanted to show you what I bought so we went to see on Sunday Frankie Valley at the O2 and then on Mon Monday night uh, we went to see Motown the musical at the Shaftesbury now obviously, as you can tell, I did buy a programme um, for Motown the Musical. And then this programme, which is so big you can't actually... That, that's how big it is. It fits in my lap tray completely. And this was only £7. I don't mind paying £7 for a programme when it's this sort of size and quality. It's full glossy, it's got gold embossing on it. Obviously it's got all the cast and crew and the songs. Um, all about the songs here, A to Z of Motown. You know, it's got some fantastic pictures of the cast. So I don't mind adding that to my programme collection. I have been collecting programmes um, from various theatres since I was a teenager. And if you're interested, I can obviously do a video on those. There, uh, There's quite a few. And um, they're not just programmes from professional companies. I do collect. If I go and see something, I will buy a programme, generally. So anything at the Dolman where I myself sometimes act and help out, I will get a programme. Um, anything at um, that I've been in, I've got programmes for. I think they go right back to around 1990. Um, so programmes I was in, programmes of things I went to see. When I was a teenager and I was studying drama, I went to see a lot of stuff. So I had to add that to my uh, collection of programmes. While we were on our way to see Motown the Musical at the Chattery, we popped into Forbidden Planet, which is one of my favourite chains in the UK. It's a UK chain store and it's kind of comic shops, but it's not just a comic shop. They don't just sell comics, they sell books, they sell DVDs and they also sell uh, figures of various characters of um, comic characters and TV characters. They've got a huge Doctor Who section. I was very tempted in the Doctor Who section, but I was very good. Um, at the moment, they've got a major display on for Buffy the Vampire Slayer because it's the 20th anniversary of Vampire Slayer. In fact, this is the Forbidden Planet carrier bag, which is so cool. They were established in 1978 and they have branches all over the country. Uh, Birmingham, Bristol, Cambridge, the London one, which this one in this one in Newcastle, Coventry, Croydon, Liverpool, Southampton, and they even do mail order. I've been, I mean, they don't have the Cardiff one on here, but there is a Cardiff one. I'm not actually sure why the Cardiff one's not on there, but there is a Cardiff one because I've been in the Cardiff one many, many times. But on the back of the carrier bag, it actually has got there, Buffy. Celebrating 20 years of slaying it a lot. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, 20th anniversary, so currently showing on the Sci-Fi Channel weekdays at 4pm. I don't watch it on the there because I have them all on DVD anyway, so I thought I'd show you the carry bag because it's pretty cool. Um, but I did pick up a Funko Pop. I don't collect them. This is actually the only one I own, but again, it's one of my favourite characters, comic characters. Um, um, I don't really collect. I do have some of the comics and I do have some of the um, some books and I do have a big comic book which I'll probably show you at some point and the original, not the original but it, the, the main TV series from the 1970s and that is Wonder Woman Funko Pop because obviously the film comes out this year and I can't wait for that so I'm going to collect these Funko Pops I quite like the look of the Funko Pop Wonder Woman ones um, so I'm going to try and pick up the rest of those at some point. Um, 
as you know we're currently having our house decorated I think she might have to live on my mantelpiece I've got to do some jigging or on the shelving that we're having put in so that was on Monday on Tuesday we had a completely free day and we went to Greenwich to go somewhere if I can find what I was not going to show you yes we went to Greenwich and I can't find the book um, oh, okay and we went on the Cutty Sark now I love these guidebooks. I collect guidebooks from every stately home or house I go to, much like I, I like to collect the programmes. Um, so this is a Cutty Sark guide. It tells you all about the, the history of how Cutty Stark was, what she was for, how she was built, how she was saved for the nation, how she was restored and so on. It's not an in-depth book. There are in-depth books on the history of the Cutty Sark and the restoration but this is just a little guidebook that you can get so I do collect those and I so I picked that one up while we're at the Cutty Sark I did buy some postcards now I, you will say, see that these are identical postcards there's two the same and the reason for this is whenever I go somewhere like that I always buy a postcard for myself and for my mum because we both collect postcards have you noticed I collect a lot of different things so sometimes it's just easy to get two postcards the same and then there's no arguing about who has what. <laughs> I made that mistake with the fridge magnets from Tenerife. Never again. So yeah, and I, I like that one at night and it's all lit up. And I bought, because I also buy her a fridge magnet wherever we go, a Cutty Sark fridge ma magnet. Now I have in my in the past collected fridge magnets myself, but I'm finding that they get everywhere. Um, and I just don't have the space for them and I do like fridge magnets but I don't feel the need to collect them anymore so I thought no I'll get one for mum and that's it but what I did get is something else that I collect and if I can find it here it is I bought myself a cutty sock so it's the same pictures on the magnet and it's a you have to excuse the black on my fingers because I've got nail polish everywhere um, it's a magnetic bookmark so I thought I'd get one of those. Um, Paul bought a keyring, which is a navigational instrument keyring. It's really pretty. After that, because we were in Greenwich, we walked up to the Royal Observatory because you've got to. And they were having a offer on tickets. So if you bought a ticket for both the Cutty Sark and the Royal Observatory, it was like £19 instead of £13 each which is what it is to get into one and then the other. And you don't really spend a lot of time there. Although I did take a lot of photographs of both. So again, this is the little guidebook for the Royal Observatory at Greenwich. The, again, I got this while we were at the Cutty Sark because they were on offer. You got two for eight pounds. They're normally at five pounds each. That just tells you a little bit about the navigational instruments and time and the people who lived at the observatory buildings and the telescopes Let's show you that one there. so uh, yeah I got that and again I got a fridge magnet for my mum of the Meridian line which is pretty cool even though it's, I've heard that it's actually not actually where that line is but I'm not going to say anything else because it doesn't really matter it's all about, it's all about the fun and they actually have a photograph on the wall in the observatory of Tom Hanks standing on the Meridian line, Meridian line, which was pretty cool. Um, so I got, and we got Paul's mum one as well, another bookmark. This is the observatory bookmark. Again, it's magnetic. As you notice, I collect a lot of things. I also collect bookmarks now. I mean, since I really got into reading, I found I didn't have enough bookmarks and now I've got loads. Um, I also bought up at the observatory, because you do, I bought a colouring book, because where else should you buy a copy of The Time Garden by Daria Song than at the place where time is the most important thing. Um, so, yeah, so it was like 9 99 it's cover price. And I am really looking forward, and stars and astronomy and all that sort of stuff, so it goes really well with the whole observatory thing. So I picked up a copy of The Time Garden. Now, I do believe that for Grace's Colour Along, this is one of the books that you can use because it's Daria's song. 
and I, you can use Diary Song books so uh, any Jade Summer, any Diary Song so I'll be using this one. I do want to get the other two, I particularly want the Night Voyage because I like the look of that one but that's that one. What else did I buy? Oh yes, coming out of the DLR or the Docklands Light Railway at Greenwich one of the first shops you come across is Waterstones. So I went in and had a cup of tea, but I also bought a book. I bought Necropolis London and It's Dead by Catherine Arnold. This is basically a history of burial rites in uh, London and how they dealt with it from pagan times right up to the modern day. Um, and about the creation of the uh, Victorian garden cemeteries like Highgate. So I did start to read it, but I will probably just put it to one side now and read it later. It's a book I've wanted for a while. I will tell you a bit more about it when I do my April book haul, which will probably be at the beginning of next week. I haven't finished yet because I still bought some other things. I've just got to find them because this is the third time I've tried to film this video because I ran out of battery and the, the microphone wasn't working so I had to take it off. And I bought two coasters that say Camden Northwest One. Because um, Camden's one of the, my favourite places in London to go. It's such a cool place. The market's fantastic. I've bought tons of stuff there before. Bought my Doctor Who hoodie from there, which I love. And that was it, just in a shop at King's Cross where we were staying. But I also bought another colouring book. Now I'm thinking of having a colour along myself. If you want to, if you think that's a good idea, leave me a comment. Um, so I'll let you know. So I'm sort of collecting colouring books um, to decide what to do on my colouring along. But I couldn't leave London without picking up this book, which is Lost in London, a colouring colouring in tour across England's capital by Sylvia Moritz and Rowan Otterson. Now, so this book is just fantastic. It basically gives you a quick tour of London that you can colour in. So we get onto the, not that bit, that's the first actual, is you have this spread of the Thames. There you go. And you start your journey at London Heathrow. We fly into Heathrow Airport. We go up to Wembley, Kew Gardens, and blah blah blah, the Shard, and Tower Bridge, Canary Wharf, and we end up eventually at City Airport. So it is a colour along journey. Now, what I like about this is it's not just a colouring book, it goes to you some little facts on not all the pages, but some of the pages like on this one, which is Heathrow Airport. So you see the little plane there. It says, on average, an aeroplane takes off or lands from Heathrow Airport every 45 seconds. And as you go through, you do get more of these. There's Primrose Hill and Camden Town, which I love. Um, here we go, here's another one. Um, this is Mayfair, and it says, Mayfair is named after a local fair that is used that used to take place every May from 1686 to 1784. So, and you've got those dotted throughout the entire book. And it's just like square pictures, but it's great. Here's another one. Um, moored on the River Thames, HMS Belfast is one of three remaining ships that took part in the D-Day landings of 1944. So I just love that sort of book that has these sorts of fantastic um, things on it. You know, we've got the little facts about London and and such. So, yeah, I mean, that is what I bought on my trip to London, really. Um, oh, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, I had fun getting it home as well. So, I mean, obviously, let me know what you think about doing a colour along. I'm thinking sometime at the end, I think I was thinking at the end of June, because there's loads at the moment, um, but we can discuss that later. If you want a full flip through of the Lost in London book, let me know and I will happily do a full flip through. I might do it anyway because I think it's a fantastic, I love this book, um, Lost in London. I will do a full flip through if you want. I do like this book um, and it was only £10 as well, so it wasn't over expensive. So yeah, I mean, I'm going to go get ready for work. I will be back tomorrow with part one, day one of Grace's Colour Along, um, where I will be colouring from something from 
the Time Garden because it's Daria's song and I'll probably also, well I will be also doing one of the vampires from Jade Summer's Vampires book. Um, that's the one thing I have got a lot of Jade Summer books so <laughs> it's going to make it quite easy for me. So I hope to see you soon. There's going to be a lot of book videos coming up as well as these colouring ones. I hope to see you all soon. I can't wait to see what you're reading and colouring and yeah I'll see you soon. Bye now.